I did it. <laughs> Yay me. Um, so to your question, Matt, about like how, like what is the scope, I think is, is like of mm -hmm. this document. Um, I, that's a good question, right? And this is always like the, the balance we have in the chaos project as to like how much do we just kind of locate people in the right spot? And how much do we actually tell people what is right and what is wrong? And so my guess is, is that I haven't, like I said, I haven't been really involved in the development of this. Just uh, my guess is it's, it's more just kind of like orienting people on things that they should think about when collecting the data. It's always the, just the moving people off zero kind of thing. Like if you haven't thought about the data that you're collecting, in the ethics I'm doing that here, here are some guidelines to just kind of get you located a little bit better. Is that right, Vinod? Is that how the conversation has been going in the community meeting? You're muted, Vinod. Yes, that is correct. And that was a, also a challenge. Same question arises in the community meeting is how detailed we want to go. And that was a still not clear in the community. Like, it can be as detailed as Mark, or it can be like uh, just a checklist for others to think, okay, if we are doing some de uh, data related or other ethical things, they should be uh, like aware of these things and can consider those things. Okay. So maybe for, for this group, like if, as Vinod brought us to, to page three, I'm going to insert page numbers. Um, like in terms of maybe just, we could just take a second on that top part, the ethical considerations. Can you scroll up just a little bit, Matt? Nope, yep, right there. So the ethical, the outline proposal for chaos ethics guidelines and that first point of ethical considerations you know, from a DEI perspective, are there are there points within this that, that we also think we should be sensitive to with respect to, to how other people collect data or we use this data? You know, is are these are these issues of of inclusivity where you know, collecting data can, um, you know, reinforce power structures or reinforce governance structures that continue to, to not support inclusivity. I'm honestly, I'm just thinking out loud right, right now, right? Are there any considerations as we're collecting this data? Not we, but as others are collecting this data might want to think about from a DEI perspective. It's okay if we don't have anything, but. Um, I'm just curious, is this basically outlining like what happens when the data has been collected? Like kind of like data at rest or like how we're using it after it's been collected or is it talking yeah. about how we go about collecting it as well. I think it's, I think it's really the, the former. So okay. it's, so like, let's say you, Lauren, have collected information about communities that are of interest to you. You know what I mean? Like, what are the things that you should think about when you're taking a look at, at that data? Okay, that makes sense then, thank you. I felt this guideline was for the both purposes. Like if you have collected how to be considerate of that data, or if you are planning to consider, uh, collect some data, what things you should consider uh, this checklist or this list can help you guide that, that you can consider those things while even collecting the data. All right. 
So I was looking, I, I was thinking about all the, um, the GDPR things I've come across and two of them that I didn't see in here originally were data storage and data security. I'm not sure how we want to split this up or put it into different buckets, but um, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily see those in there, but there's something that <clears throat> they care a lot about and, and a lot of documents relating to data ethics. Um, I've been kind of thinking uh, about this one um, between meetings and I was thinking um, there's a lot of really good documentation on data ethics that already exists and I want to know what we're adding that's going to be either different or not. so so I know we're going to have metric specific information but I know I don't want to try and reinvent the wheel either with um, with the ethics conversation that we have uh, and also, if we do want to focus on this as, a, as like a leg of the project, um, have we ever, have, has anyone ever considered making it an initiative of the project and putting, uh, putting structure and format on it? I don't think so. To your last question. Yeah. Um, and to Justin's question in the chat, Justin, I was typing it, but I'll just say it. Um, this is, these are guidelines that the chaos project would provide to individuals who are collecting data on communities. You're muted, Justin, somehow you're double muted. Still double muted. <laughs> Yeah, I think I hear you now. Flip through all the different microphones. <laughs> um, just wondering more about the how this conversation came up. Was there something that was discussed where people thought this would be helpful, or yes. like where where did this come from? I guess is my question. I think it, so we have we have um, guidelines that we've been developing like internal to the chaos project. So like, how do we in the chaos project think about the data that we collect? you know, like, like I was saying, like through chaos con or just through kind of these meetings, like how are we sensitive to our own data? But then we didn't think, um, let me, so that's, that's one document and that's not this document. And then over the course of the many years of the chaos project, I think people are concerned that the, the data that is collected with respect to community health could be used to, to um, kind of game a system. It could be used to kind of marginalize people and you know, identify people as not, not doing well. Um, it could be used in ways that are not just really meant to just understand kind of the pulse of a community. That could, it could be weaponized kind of in a way. So that was a, a lot of the original conversation. And so these guidelines are for say maintainers who are not in the chaos project that are using chaos tools and chaos metrics like hey you're doing this and that's that's fine but you know as you're collecting this this information on people you, you need to think about things and, and what this information could mean or could could do um and so there's there's stated things like gdpr or you know the state by state kind of regulations that are starting to show up, like what you can and can't do with the data. But there's probably kind of ethical considerations even beyond the GDPR as to how this data might be used. Yeah. And where where did is this is there a specific working group that's leading the charge on this? Or? No. Yeah. So actually this is the we are talk, bringing this up in the community call. So this is one of the first kind of working documents that we've started to do in the community call. So we thought that this was a community level effort. And so the last maybe two or three weeks in the that Tuesday community call is where this has been being worked on. Got it. So I guess then having, I came in a little late, so I don't know if this is some of the context, but hearing Matt, Matt Cantu's comments, um, I'm just thinking that there is a huge scope that I'm seeing here. And I'm almost thinking like this could even be a whole new working group. I mean, this is just such a huge topic. Like you could have folks meet every week and just talk about these things and how to develop that and, and maintaining that. So to me, I'm just, I'm, 
I guess there's a concern that I have is that whoever is taking this on might be taking on more work than they might realize, or that it might be a bigger initiative than maybe how it's been planned so far. And maybe this could be a good discussion to think about our working groups again after so long about maybe this is a, a bigger topic. Maybe there's a group of folks who across different working groups are interested in this. Um, Cause I think it's good work, but I think it's just, it's just huge. Like this is such a, a yeah. huge topic. So do you think that there is, do you think that there is a way that, that we could produce kind of a preliminary document in this format that just kind of helps locate people into the, the space, right? And then following that. So like in the CAS project, like I, I said earlier, we're always trying to just move people off zero, right? So like, like, is there a document, a preliminary document that would be correct? You know what I mean? Like it would be helpful. Um, it's certainly not comprehensive by any means, but it's a starting point for people who are using CAS tools and CAS metrics to start thinking about the, the ethics that, that are carried forward in doing so. And then from that point, maybe to your point then, Justin, like maybe a working group could then start to unpack, you know, I don't know, like looking at what's on the screen with Matt right now, but like licensing or non-trivial insights, I don't know what that is, but you know what I mean? Like kind of looking more deeply point by point on this document. Yeah, because I guess the, the concern I would have is that with it being so big, there's a higher chance that just like with anything with content where you're reviewing that it won't be as detailed of a review and like all of these things could have deeper subtopics like you could break them down into smaller pieces and and go for have like a week or two weeks or a month of discussion on any of those so i'm just thinking that in terms of a more thorough like resource that we produce like maybe there's a way we could make this instead of like a mega doc creating into something that's a little more smaller and easier to review so we okay. can get more yeah. diverse um feedback and perspective from folks that might have something to say maybe about GDPR because they did that at their company, but they might not know anything about like um, making raw data available or I mean, I mean, that's not the best analogy, but I think you get okay. where I'm. You know, I do. So maybe this document could be looked at like, what is that, that map for these smaller discussions that you're talking about? Like, again, like if it's like so maybe we present it that way. Cause I think then we could still put the map out there. You know, like there's a lot under the hood on each of these points, um, but this can at least serve as a, as a point of orientation. But you can see, you can see Charlotte on the map, but if you really want to understand Charlotte, <laughs> you gotta, gotta read the wiki page or go to the city itself, right? You gotta dig a little deeper. So I don't know why I picked Charlotte, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. So like as a starting point, I think this is helpful, but I guess I, I'm thinking maybe I jumped too far ahead thinking about like an end deliverable or, or where this, what this will become in the long run, because yeah. I think it's useful. Okay. Yeah. This is just getting us like, we know we need to do this because we're in a, the CAS project is, is basically saying, go collect this data. <laughs> like, I mean, that's kind of one of the premises <laughs> of the project, right? That, um, but with that carries a lot of these ethical concerns as well. And we, I, I think we, it's time that we start being more, it's not just my own thought like in this document, but I think it's time to be more attentive to what is carried forward in that. Cool. It's a wonderful process of moving from um, following the regulations or asking people, please follow the regulations to setting an example. It's really yeah. cool. This is a great discussion. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next topic we have for today is the tools. Wow, we were 25 minutes in now. <laughs> uh, the tools that are being used in communities. I didn't put that in there. I don't know what that means. Um, I didn't either, but I did want to point something out when I saw that is recently in the inclusive naming initiative, someone had submitted a tool called woke and their repo was get woke. And while the tool was good, we had issues with the naming of the tool. 
Don't know if this is related to that in any way, shape, or form either, but maybe that is kind of something we need a metric on is how a name affects a project, especially in DNI. Like I said, it's not my agenda yeah. item. Can you, Amy, do you have a link? Is it just a repo for this? I'm always just kind of curious. Um, or somebody found it. Oh, I found it and I linked it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Well, <laughs> we're a naming initiative and your repo is get woke and your, right. your project is woke and while they had the best intentions and a historical reason for picking that. We just had an issue of the name for linking toward to it and including it in our stuff. Um, so that, that is kind of, at what point do names of projects affect, affect open source projects? Talking about the GIMP uh, image editor, for example, but maybe it's I less think... offensive by the... Well, names of projects have been point of discussion many times. I yeah, I mean, GIMP has the longer name, and of course, we've shortened it to GIMP, and GIMP is bad. Um, not the project, but the shorter name. But at this point, it's not my it's, intention to, to address know, the at, topic. At, okay. at, at this point, but it kind of it does relate. At one point, is something so established you can't change the name of your project? I assume. Woke is not all that established, but she felt very strongly of why she named it that and chose to unmerge, you know, it being included. Um, but yeah, that is potentially an, a DNI issue is your name of your project. But like I said, this yeah. wasn't my agenda item, so I don't know where whoever's item it was was going with it. Speculating about the intention, uh... Also, there was a discussion about Sean with Prosebot about also detecting uh, the lack of inclusive language um, of fail failures, I guess. Um, I guess I'm curious, like if we were to measure such a thing, what would be the bounds? Like what would what were some of the like variables we would look at for what is a, a good name or a bad name? Because I'm thinking like, I guess my context for this is I'm thinking of it as a metric, like how would we define that? Also knowing that there's a ton of other community, well, I guess not a ton, but at least one very established community that owns this entire issue of inclusive naming. Like, are we duplicating the wheel or is there a way that we could create a metric for, for how we measure something like inclusive naming? I don't think INI is doing any metrics. They're just giving suggestions and recommendations. Um, I, yeah, I honestly don't think they, they are collecting data and doing metricing. We're putting together yes. lists of names and suggestions and that type of thing and tools that you can use. But like I said, I don't think they're doing metricing. I, would, I guess I'm just trying to think what a metric would be or what it could look like. I would see it as an internal metric, like, uh, as simple as the question, what do you think about our project's name? <laughs> um, and, then, and then letting them do what they want with that, you know? Like more qualitative feedback. Yeah, because it's definitely a qualitative issue. And we probably might have been the first ones to say there was an issue with the name. <laughs> well, I, I still don't even, I, I might be a boomer, but I don't know what woke means anymore. So well, and that's just it. It's become so politicized and you know, kind of derogatory mm -hmm. at this point. But she said it came from a, a good place. But then, you know, we've had the discussion of with the internal naming stuff, you know, rule of thumb didn't know its background and that it's a bad thing. Um there was something else people were currently looking to change, and I'm like, why? That was, I think, for the GitHub from uh, main to a uh, master to main, a change of that name was. That's pretty. Com that's pretty common. Yeah. A change. Yeah, I mean, most people have done it or already or are waiting for the Git community itself to 
pick what they're going to use so that they can follow suit versus ha picking something and then get using something else and everything breaking. Yeah. I would, um, like in terms of a metric too, Justin, or go ahead, Vinod. I was like, uh, we got this example of book. I'm trying, because English is not my native language, I'm trying to comprehend how this word is like uh, not a right fit for the project or something. Trying to comprehend the context was not clear to me, like in terms of that book project, what is the issue? Because if I look at the meaning of the word book, which is like alert the injustice in the society, especially racism. And the project was trying to do the same, like detect non-inclusive language. So I was because not clear why this woke is- has, Woke is now being used kind of derogatorily against people like that person is so woke because maybe their intentions aren't the greatest but because it's the latest greatest thing kind of like everyone jumping on kubernetes bad amy um <laughs> you know it's the latest and greatest thing it's got all the hype therefore you jump on the bandwagon but you may or may not truly believe in the principles behind it oh. so woke is being used in yeah. bad ways like like open washing or green washing but more on a personal level. Um, and, and for me, it was a different thing, actually. I, I um, Aside from the meaning of the term in general public, I also like just didn't quite understand, like, where does that come from? What does it mean? <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily an inclusive term. It's on its own. Um, the, yeah. The... So, so um... To, I'd like to, if I could go back to Justin's point once. On, no, no, no. It's still on. It's still on this issue. But like in terms of a metric, so one of the things that I'm starting to see, particularly in the DEI working group, is that a lot of the metrics don't necessarily have numbers associated with them. That they are meant to be like inspirational for the people who who are using the metric. And as an example, like in the badging program, um, we have a we use a metric called diversity access tickets. And like the question isn't whether like how many diversity access tickets have been provided by an event, um, but the question is like is the event thinking through the process by which diversity access tickets are provided, um, enabling those access tickets to be gained by people like. If it was down to a metric, it would just be a yes or a no kind of thing. You know, like, are they providing diversity access tickets? Are they not providing diversity access tickets? And that, this is just kind of a learning on my own. Like, over time, like, the yes, no is probably less interesting than encouraging event organizers to think through the process as to why you would want to provide diversity access tickets and how you would go about doing that. So when we do, like, the event reviews, it's really meant to be more of an inspiration for a conversation. And this might be similar here, that it's not a metric of measuring whether the name is appropriate or inappropriate. It's just, are you as a community, to Matt's point, are you as a community kind of reflecting internally as to the implications on, on the words that you choose? That, that's, that's all. Well, um... Does anybody want to start that metric and get it going? We can at least take a look at it and see how it looks. Yeah, I mean, we can think about it. We could kind of sleep on it. <laughs> well, like I, you know, I, I think it's I think it's a good metric. Maybe we could start tracking it in the spreadsheet. Is there any way for us to find out who put it in the agenda? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Comment. That happens more regularly than it should. <laughs> We're all here. Right. I have no idea who put that in there. <laughs> yeah, perhaps this should be name spam it. <laughs> so sometimes it says who we are, and other times it says we're anonymous, this or that. You know, Justin always shows up as Justin for some route somehow. Justin so sounds good. I don't know why. That's how he has figured that out. <laughs> add, add yourself to the Google Doc as a as an editor. That's oh, is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> 
So maybe a suggestion for all the working groups, especially sometimes it happens a lot. Like somebody writes an agenda, they show up, they don't show up, and we start figuring out who has added it. So maybe create a suggestion that whoever adds the agenda, so please write his name so that we get to know the context or have if they want it to be explicit about it. Would be a good convention. Interestingly, looking at the at the spreadsheet, there is no metric on inclusive naming, just broadly. So I mean, maybe that could just be something that we include as a metric. And we can say things like the names of your software, things like the words in your documentation. You know what I mean? The metric could be at a high level. And really just kind of draw forward the things that the inclusive naming initiative is doing already. Yeah. I mean, we both fall under Linux Foundation. There's no reason why we shouldn't be working together. Yeah. I'm going to add this at the um, under project and community. We probably really should have a metric on inclusive naming. We've been talking about it for a long time. So if Seattle actually ha happens, because I just saw the email saying we now need to wear masks indoors. So I don't know how many companies are actually going to let us go now. Um, it might be a good time if everyone's there to reach out and maybe have a cross-project meeting. That'd be a great thing with the, the inclusive naming folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because at least Celeste will be there because she works for Linux Foundation. Um, cool. But yeah, we still don't know whether we're going to be allowed to go. And now they've got the new wear a mask thing. I saw that. Which I'm okay with. Yeah. But I need my company to say I can go. Yeah, I'm going to put in my request today too. So. Getting back okay. to your point, Amy, about um, it's sort of the same. I think the 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 the, the angles of approach are different. Uh, as we're more focusing on the project itself um, rather so than uh, coming as, up with a As with already a list. mentioned, the DNI group, we tend to ask more open ended questions than numbers. Um, so, in that way, we are similar to naming because they're not collecting anything, as far as I know. But um, our concerns are gathering information that can be digested. And I don't think any of the tools or anything else besides doing a, they might've done a survey. No, they basically set out a spreadsheet and said, add, you know, what you're doing, any trouble, trouble words so that they can then put words together. That's what the naming work stream does. The community work stream is tools and how do you implement this in your community? So again, they could definitely be a, a, a user, but that's not really the right term. But anyways, a user of what we come up with. And then we'd get data back because we should always get data back. Yeah, that sounds right. Well, um, that sounds really good. And it's out of the spreadsheet already. So um, we have a couple more things to talk about. We have about 10 minutes. So I'm just keeping us on track here. Uh, I've got the badging update um, for the Chaos DEI badging initiative. Um, so I am really happy to tell you that um, the badging bot is finally underway with the upgrades. Um, we have, we were looking at the JAWS bot Whedon, um, but we, we found some, um, some things that wouldn't work with our, with our, um, with what we're doing with badging. And we do, we'd have to do a lot of refactoring. We found it was less work to just, um, to just spend a lot more time upgrading the bot that we have and have plugged in. Um, so we've migrated that to a new cloud platform and, uh, actually Dhruv, uh, some of you know, Dhruv, he is, um, has volunteered to help so far on this project on this sound thing and for um, just for fun and I think that's really cool 
And I just wanted to say thanks about that. Um, we're working on that together. And the badging freeze is happening on September 5th. Um, not much to say about that yet. We're, we're going to have a lot more um, metrics that we're going to be adding to the uh, roster of um, current metrics. And we're going to be doing some rebuilding work too Matt, on you know um, some of the this, changes. You know, that's the Sunday of a three-day weekend, right? Is it? Yes. <laughs> oh, so it should probably be the six, shouldn't it? <laughs> or the seven? The Monday of a three-day weekend. You oh want my it gosh. On the seven. Oh man, I didn't even think about that. I'll bring that up to the badging group, and we'll um, we'll talk about getting that changed. Um, I didn't even think about that. I I I, I figured um, four days after the or five days after the chaos metrics are released. We would um we would do that, but that makes a lot of sense. I mean, there may not be a lot you need to do, but if people want to have their weekend, that's yeah, yeah. So we'll focus on that. Sounds like a good thing to bring up to the group. <laughs> um, yeah. So we've moved on forward to the the most famous or my favorite part of the meeting is when we talk about swag stuff. Um, so we have some DEI badging stuff. Do we have regular DEI stuff coming too? Or is it is it going to be chaos and then badging? Right now, all I have is chaos stuff. Okay. I have t-shirts and a lunch thing, like a lunch bag and some resistance bands, but nothing DEI specific. We had, um, I'll have to send this to you, but we had a... Uh, kind, not necessarily a vote, but I like that picture versus I like this picture. And the unanimous vote, the, the unanimous collection of responses was about um, a certain picture. So I'll send that to oh, you about I'll send that to me. And we can, yeah. If it's stickers, we can just go through Sticker Mule and get that done. Okay. Yeah. So, so we can just coordinate with Susie okay. here at the university. Okay. Cool. Do we know what kind of what kind of stuff? Do, is it is it a secret or do we know the secret what a secret that what we're getting at um as far as swag goes it chaos con i'm i'm excited to hear i already told it's all in the slack channel it's totally open so it's resistance bands so there's a bag with resistance bands that has chaos on it there's a lunch like a soft lunch cooler that has chaos on it and then i'm bringing a bunch of t-shirts as well and so certainly anybody on this call who's there can get a t-shirt because they are all t-shirt qualified and if you didn't make it today you're out of luck yeah that's right <laughs> okay looks like we have a couple more things on the agenda as far as moving forward with colorblindness nico you want to take it from here yeah i, I took on the initiative of uh, adding a metric um, for colorblindness, and there was already discussion about scope, whether that should be for events or uh, more projects based, and if it should be larger in a sense like uh, anything visual uh, related or even dyslexia was something that came to my mind. Uh, one of the issues I had, and I put it on uh, Slack as well, is um, how to define a metric. And I think Matt. Uh, you, you address that by saying um, it's more qualitative um, rather than being uh, something you can actually measure. So the fact that projects pay attention to it, uh, that's I think the, the most valuable here, which uh, the format is a bit um, difficult to work with, I guess. So are there areas here, Nico, that you want us to take a look at it because this looks uh, good I mean I gave it a, a read and I, I like it yeah this is what we came up with last time um I'm I'm not sure how to proceed at the moment I'm willing to put in some work but I don't know <laughs> in what direction yeah, yeah. Needed. Right, right, right. Um, how about we also also being new to chaos in this sense so yeah, yeah. go ahead Matt uh, how about we take the last um, few minutes to just uh, all, uh, as a group, get over this document and um, take a look at um, how we may be able to add to it. 
Yeah, I think that sounds good. And then Nico, I mean, if it's, if we're all kind of satisfied, maybe next meeting, we could just spend a little bit of time like getting it into a PR, you know what I mean? And then just kind of going through that whole like contribution process so that we can get broader community feedback on it. All right, that sounds good. Just a comment, like in the entire metric, it is focused on the color blindness and the title is on the visual processing, which is confusing. Yeah, I think we just have to go with focusing on color blindness as the rest of the text is on the topic. I feel like if we did visual processing, we would just end up splitting it out like we did documentation accessibility anyway. So much time with each one. It was a good comment there, if you know. Thanks for all the, <laughs> all the work. In a couple of minutes, I see the document improving a lot. So that's nice. And um, please, if you are a contributor, um, I'm going to add everybody I can see is on the call that's working on it. Um, but if you'd like to be recognized for a contribution to the metric, please add yourself to the contributor section as well. I was adding a little bit to the filters, trying to pull. So the, the filters here could be like a community's attention to colorblindness, right? And the filter would be like, we could look at this particularly within our events. We could look at it particularly within, so this is, you know, um, maybe on the website kind of thing. Like we could we could filter this on a variety of different places. So I think 
I think this is what the, the points are saying, like visuals, event announcement, event slides, documentation. Yeah, I think that's nice. It can be quite a, a long list, but we yeah, I mean, let's let's let, it'd be great if we could put that list. You know what I mean? Do we want to move the are the used visuals readable up as a sub point of attention to color blindness at events? Where are you looking, Amy? Um, this one. Yeah. Move it up here. Underneath here is a sub. Underneath where? Just do it. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> what you do? <laughs> I don't know. That's why I wasn't doing things. <laughs> My Mac has not been good since its reboot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did the update, huh? <laughs> yeah, and I've rebooted five times since last week. Um, I did it for the meeting before this one because my Google chat would not work. And we were meeting visually versus IRC today. Um, so yeah, so move the are the used. I'll try it. You can fix it if I mess it up. There. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes. Okay. And that could also kind of apply to the website as well. Um, and I mean, because we're including documentation and everything, websites. So are the visuals readable? I mean, that could go almost under every one of them, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, um, for now, well, I'll, I'll leave my comments till next week. For now, we have um, reached our time on the meeting. I'd like to be respectful of everyone's time and ability to have 10 minutes or eight minutes until the next meeting. So thank you, everybody. And um, can we put this on the top, this metric on the top of the meeting agenda for next week? We can just set that real fast. I mean, I can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know is, any, is anybody able to be facilitated next week? That's something we I forgot to mention earlier. I can facilitate. So that's okay. Fine. So okay. Cool. All right. See y'all later. All right. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.